Last week, the Thai people went to the poll to vote on their new constitution. This is coming in after the 2014 coup. It did pass with about 61% of the vote, but with only a 50% turnout. But with that said, the military government did impose laws not that long ago that made it illegal to criticize the constitution. I'm just going to go over the backstory of what got us to this point and as well trying to give you what the actual consequences of this vote, of this new constitution are. This simply the facts, no kind of, nothing more than the facts. And then I also want to kind of compare it to the other political systems in the world and how much different will it actually be. In 1932, Thailand had its first military coup. This transitioned the government from its absolute monarchy system that had been around for the last 700 years to the constitutional monarchy system similar to many of the Commonwealth nations. At the time, the monarch was allowed to keep some of its powers and there was a appointed slash elected house that was brought in. Half of the house was to be appointed by the leaders of the coup and the other half was to be elected by the general population. The reason that it was set up like this was that the leaders of the coup were actually Western educated and did not believe that the general Thai public were educated enough to have full control over their own government. Their idea was that once half the population what got education that they would transition to a fully elected house. This first coup simply started a cycle where you'd have a coup, a transitional charter, and a new constitution. During these periods, it would simply just transfer power in between the military, king, and elective representatives. From all these different new constitutions, you could really group them into three different categories. You would have the executive ones, which would be the ones where the king or the military would have absolute power. You would have a appointed le legislator where you would have either the elective rep a half body elective representatives and half appointed by either the king or military or fully appointed by king and military or you had the elective representatives where you would have a fully elective body. Over the last 80 years there's been 24 different coup attempts 13 of which were successful. The latest one was in 2012 which the military claimed was needed to eliminate corruption throughout the government. After the military took power, they implemented a military agenda called the National Council of Peace and Order. With the new constitution passing, it has paved the way for the first elective representatives to be voted in sometime in 2017. So what does this constitution actually do? It sets the king as the head of state, which is, would be very similar to how it is in most of the Commonwealth nations with the queen, two legislation bodies. One will be the Senate or the Overseas Committee that will be fully appointed by the military. And the second body will be a legislative elected body that will be voted in by the people. How it is kind of sold to the public right now, from my understanding, is that the elected body will be controlling the government and leading it by voting on laws and the like, well the Senate will simply be there to oversee the elected body. For example, uh, the elected body will have to pick a prime minister, yet the Senate will be able to veto that. Now let's compare that update to how a lot of the Western countries work, in particular Canada where I know best. We also have a Senate and a lower house. Our lower house is elected as well with our Senate being appointed. Our Senate is appointed by the Prime Minister, which is a vote elected, but still it's not fully elected Senate, it is fully appointed, very similar to how the Thai one is. One good thing that has already come out of the fact that the new constitution was passed was that the Thai stock market increased 1.5% the Monday after the vote was accepted. This is a pretty significant increase and shows that at least the market is in support and thinks that the new constitution will stabilize the economy. I finished editing the video, it took longer to edit than I hope it would. And since I filmed, there has been a series of recent events. Most notably, there was a series of bomb attacks in Thailand. These were targeted at tourists. The reason why an individual would want to target tourists is because tourism makes up 20% of the Thai's GDP. These individuals obviously do not believe that their voice can be heard in the political system and 
think that violence is the only way to have their voice heard. Luckily, no one that I knew was injured in these attacks, though it, everyone, or almost everyone that I knew had left for traveling because it was a long weekend in Thailand celebrating the Queen's birthday. Now you know more of the story. I have a new end screen here. So over there, you can find other videos that I've made. Right below me is a shout out to Peter who made my icon. Thank you so much, it really helped. One last thing before I go, I hope you found this video informative. If you have any comments, opinions, please leave them below in the comments. I personally believe that it's important that we all become better global citizens and one way to do this is to get better informed on events happening outside our geopolitical sphere. So if you can, please leave a like and share this video with others so they can get informed on the topics as well. Thank you, until next time, keep those thoughts here. How do you get the resources and the manpower needed to make the largest site in the world might be easier than you think.